EA's NHL series has had its highs, from the legendary NHL 94 to what many players would say is the greatest game in the series, NHL 2004, to NHL 14, what I consider to be the last great NHL game. But then what? NHL 15 brought the series to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and in the process, EA stripped away a ton of features, game modes, and more, causing fan outrage. Season mode? Gone. Online be a GM mode? Gone. EA Sports Hockey League and Online Team Play? Gone. Instead you had Ultimate Team and a shallow, poor excuse for a $60 game. Not only that, but gameplay regressed and the series was set up for failure. Every game that followed was looked upon harshly by critics and was bashed even harder by the player base. Every year, it seemed like EA was simply putting out the same game, with a lack of attention to detail with things such as team uniform errors, inaccurate player face masks, and more. Gameplay became cheesy and too reliant on animations, while all of EA's other sports games had already moved on to next gen. The NHL games were still only on PS4 and Xbox One until this year, and the game was also using EA's old Ignite engine until, again, this year. Fans of the series are used to feeling neglected, yet they have no other option. While EA doesn't own the exclusive NHL rights, they are the only company currently making a licensed game, as 2K ended their series after NHL 2K11. Yet it seems like EA doesn't even care about the franchise, allocating as few resources as possible to the game. It seems like the series has shifted more towards focusing on HUT, Hockey Ultimate Team, because that's where the money is. What is an EA sports game if not fully priced with a ton of pay-to-win microtransactions? For nearly the last decade, NHL games have been bad. However, recently it seems like EA has started moving the series in the right direction. While the newly released NHL 22, the first game on next-gen consoles, isn't a great game right now, it's a legit improvement, with better graphics and vastly better gameplay. The rest of the game is basically the same as NHL 21, however, and now that it's using the Frostbite engine, people are already experiencing game-breaking glitches, following in the footsteps of every other EA Sports title. However, for now, NHL 22 appears to be better than every release since 14, but the bar really isn't that high to cross. Long gone are the days of the gems, like NHL 04 or 14. Instead of building upon the solid base they had built, EA stripped the game to its core and started fresh, resulting in shallow and straight up bad releases for years to come. While there may be hope for the future, it's safe to say that for now, EA's NHL series has fallen off and hard. Let's go back in time. In 1991, EA released NHL Hockey, the very first hockey game made by EA. The game was a hit and actually helped bring a lot of attention to the NHL and other countries. The success and reputation of John Madden football made every EA sports game a must buy, and NHL hockey lived up to it, and is commonly referred to as one of the greatest games ever released for the Sega Genesis. A year later, NHL PA Hockey 93 released. However, this game didn't feature the NHL license, only the players. It's a bit confusing because NHL is technically in the title, but NHLPA simply means the Players Association, aka EA got rights to the players, but not the league or teams. Instead of playing with the New York Islanders, for example, you'd simply play with Long Island. While team colors looked similar, there were no logos or emblems to be found, but despite this, it was still a great game and continued improving upon NHL hockey, with a port to the Super Nintendo, as well as adding a playoff mode. Game Informer actually listed NHL PA Hockey 93 as their 20th best video game ever made in a list in 2001. However, it wasn't until the next year when we got something truly special, NHL 94. This game is still widely regarded as one of the best video games ever made, and has even been re-released by EA multiple times with updated rosters. EA brought back the NHL license and the game released to critical acclaim. What made EA's NHL games stand out in comparison to other hockey games was the camera angle. Most games at the time used a broadcast style camera showing a side view of the rink, but NHL 94 used EA's signature vertical camera angle used in their other sports games, which made gameplay easier to play and simply more fun. This game added a ton of new features such as the one-timer, new game modes including a shootout mode, all-star teams, and even team-specific songs played after goals or at the start of a period, such as when the Saints go marching in for the St. Louis Blues. At the time of its release, NHL 94 was groundbreaking. No other hockey game had ever come close. 
You could even fight in this game. There's a reason people still love this game to this day. It even had an impact on players. Jeremy Roenick, a center who played from 1988 to 2009, credited NHL 94 for launching him into superstardom. Because the game was so popular and loved, and Roenick was one of the best players in the game, he became a household name. The game brought the NHL into the mainstream and was one of the most important sports games of all time. NHL 95 was similar with some tweaks, such as the ability to trade, release, sign, and create players, as well as advanced stat tracking, new injury animations, and faster gameplay speed. Ninety six released to even more critical acclaim. This is another title that many consider to be the GOAT of the series. Gameplay saw a massive improvement, with more options for offensive and defensive play. This was the first version of the game to be truly 3D, but only on the MS-DOS version. As you can see, this game looked amazing for its time. This is from 1995. It seemed like EA was dropping the greatest hockey game ever with every single release. It's actually kind of insane to think about. Every release to this point was fantastic, even the very first game, and they just kept getting better. This was a franchise to be excited about. This is John Davidson. Welcome to EA Sports Hockey Night. We have a great matchup for you here tonight. The fans are fired up and the players are on the ice and ready to go. So let's play some hockey. NHL 97 released in 1996 and on next-gen consoles such as the PlayStation 1 and Sega Saturn. This was the last game to feature a goaltender on the cover until NHL 14. It was well received, although not as highly as the previous games due to some graphical glitches and a lack of innovation on the older gen versions. NHL 98 was very similar with some small improvements, notably the introduction of the National Olympic teams. 99 and 2000 were more or less the same game. While the series was still getting good reviews, it seemed like EA had simply stopped trying to push the envelope and they appeared to be focusing more and more on their other sports titles. After years of huge improvement after huge improvement, fans were starting to feel disappointed. EA simply released roster updates and coasted on their reputation to maintain sales. NHL 2001, however, was the new game players had been waiting for. As the first installment on the PlayStation 2, the game had a massive graphical upgrade. It introduced the momentum bar where teams gain momentum over another after scoring goals or big hits, and the game was loved by critics and fans alike, putting EA's NHL series back on the charts. It wasn't perfect, as it lacked the polish of the PlayStation 1 version, but for a first attempt for a 6th generation console, it was impressive. The next game, NHL 2002, wasn't a huge improvement, but it was the first game on Xbox and the Game Boy Advance. The GBA version was simply a port of NHL 96 from the SNES with updated rosters, which was pretty cool for a handheld title. The game received good reviews once again, however some criticized the game's defensive controls and AI. NHL 2003 was another small improvement, with the only new feature of note being the Game Breaker feature, which activated after a player performs enough dekes or big hits and is basically an improvement on NHL 2001's momentum bar. But it wasn't until NHL 2004 that we received the next great NHL title. 2004 focused heavily on improving gameplay, with more realistic puck and rebound control, as well as vastly improved checking. This made a massive difference and helped bring the series back to its former glory. This was the first title actually to feature Dynasty Mode, and after winning the Stanley Cup, players would have a massive celebration which wasn't seen before. They would skate around the ice holding the cup up high, and then the entire team would take a photo, as is tradition in the NHL. These additions made NHL 2004 arguably the best NHL game ever, and today many still hold it in high regard. After stumbling around for a console generation, EA finally got it together and put in the time and effort to create something truly special. The rest of the 6th generation of NHL games were pretty similar to 2004, but NHL 06 notably had NHL 94 built into the game as a game mode, which was pretty cool. The next generation of NHL games were pretty decent, and with NHL 10, the series once again received critical acclaim. 10 added a massive load of new features, including battle of the boards, intimidation tactics, post whistle action, a first person fighting engine, spectacular goals, precision passing, improved goalie AI, interactive atmosphere, be a GM mode, and battle for the cup mode. That's a pretty insane jump from NHL 09 which featured none of this. 
The game has an 88 out of 100 Metacritic score, as well as numerous reviews giving the game a 9 out of 10 or higher. NHL 10, like NHL 04 before it, is another all-time classic in the series, and it seemed like EA had once again gotten back on track. But then, NHL 11 came around. And don't get me wrong, 11 was also a great game. Actually, another large improvement over the previous game. It featured a brand new physics engine to replace the old animation based engine, stick breaking, and received great reviews averaging at around a 9 out of 10, just like NHL 10. There was one more new addition to NHL 11, however, Ultimate Team. For those unaware, sports games used to be about simulating what you would see on TV. You pick a team and play against other teams, going through seasons in dynasty mode, playing through a career mode, and when you spend $60 on a game, you got the entire game, there was nothing else to buy. Ultimate Team came along in the 2010s in every EA Sports title, which is a virtual trading card game mode. It actually sounds cool in theory, you play the game to unlock packs which you open. The player cards you get are used in the game as actual players, and you basically build a team by earning in-game currency, buying packs, and using those unpacked players to fill out your roster. Unfortunately, the game mode has a sinister flaw, microtransactions. While games today like Fortnite or Rocket League feature microtransactions, the games are not only free to play, but you can only buy cosmetic items that don't give you a competitive advantage. In sports games, Ultimate Team allows players to buy packs for hundreds of dollars in a game that already costs full price. And then you play online with the teams you bought. Only spent $60 on the base game? Watch as you get destroyed online by someone with a financial advantage over you. Pay money to be competitive, spend way too many hours grinding to be competitive for free, or get destroyed online. That's what Ultimate Team is. And while it can be fun, it's pretty clear that it's a predatory game mode when you break it down. When EA added it to NHL 11, it really didn't seem like a big deal. But as EA saw with its FIFA series, Ultimate Team can make them a lot of money. In fact, even more money than actual game sales. So Ultimate Team and online gameplay became the focus for EA, while offline modes like Dynasty or Career modes are left in the dust. It makes sense from a business perspective, but not from an ethical one. Games marketed towards almost all ages, including children, that offer a way to gamble real money on packs, almost like a slot machine, are something I personally despise. Unfortunately, EA took its NHL series down this route. That said, the impending doom of Ultimate Team's shadow didn't affect the game's development early on, as NHL 12 vastly improved the Be A Pro mode and made some nice tweaks to gameplay, including more goalie interactions. The game was well received but not as well received as 11. Reviewers and the player base were starting to notice cheese, where there were certain techniques that made scoring way too easy. In a game where people can pay real money for their team and play online, that's not exactly what you want to see. Nevertheless, the game was still pretty good overall. 13 was another big step for the series and at the time was the best selling NHL game to date. New features included improved AI, True Performance Skating, which was a new skating engine based on physics, an improved rating system, Team First Presentation, GM Connected, which was an online version of Be A GM, NHL Moments Live where you could recreate historic moments in the sport, an improved EA Sports Hockey League, and some tweaks all around. The game continued to receive good reviews from critics, and then the series peaked. NHL 14, an incredible game, and the end of an era. The game engine was changed once again. EA borrowed the Fight Night engine for fights and collision physics from FIFA, resulting in the best playing NHL game of all time. The new deking system is fantastic. Be a pro mode got expanded so you could control your character's life off the ice. It featured an NHL 94 anniversary mode, an NBC license, and more. While at the time critics weren't going crazy over the game, it still got good reviews and has aged very well mostly due in part to what followed. I would call NHL 14 a truly great sports game, and it's right up there with NHL 2004. I have a video on the game specifically if you want to check that out. You've probably noticed a pattern by now. EA releases great NHL game after great NHL game, then stutters a little, then bounces back. However, each bounce back was shorter and shorter. NHL 14 was great and didn't give fans any reason to expect the series to just die. 
But unfortunately, well, you saw the title of this video. Everyone hates NHL 15, at least the next gen version. While the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 versions of the game was more or less the same as 14, the Xbox One and PS5 version was atrocious. So many steps backwards and so little steps forward. So many features were removed or lost in the console transition, resulting in a shallow mess of a game that set the series up for future failure. Online team play? Gone. EA Sports Hockey League? Gone. Two of the community's favorite game modes just wiped from existence. That's not even the worst part. EA removed Season Mode, a longtime staple of the series. Be a GM Mode returned, only in a bare bones state with numerous features missing. And Be a GM Online was now gone as well. Be a Pro was also cleaned of all depth, and now you simply created a player and he was automatically on an NHL team as a starter. That's it. Graphically, the game looked great, but gameplay was cheesy and glitchy. It was clear what EA was doing remove everything from the game to force the player base to play more Ultimate Team, which then makes them more money because the mode is pay to win. Your $60 purchase isn't enough anymore. Not only does spending $60 not give you a deep game, you need to pay a lot more just to be competitive online in HUD. The closest comparison I can find to this is when EA released Madden 13, missing many, many features from Madden 12 and older games, and the series still hasn't recovered. That happened to NHL games too, only a couple years later, a familiar pattern for a series EA loves to neglect. Critics panned the game, as it had a 60 out of 100 average Metacritic score, as well as a 3.7 out of 10 user score. The community was divided among those making excuses for EA, aka the people who only play HUD and don't care about game modes or depth, and those rightfully unhappy with a terrible product that cost at least $60 to play. NHL 16 brought back a few of those removed features such as EA Sports Hockey League and online team play, but the game was still a far cry from NHL 14. Of course, much of the player base was swindled by EA into thinking that this was a good game simply because it was an improvement from NHL 15. That's like me feeding you a sandwich that's been sitting in the sun for 30 days, and then the next day I give you a sandwich that's been sitting in the sun for 15 days. Sure, the second sandwich is going to be a lot better, but it's still garbage. For those looking for a good NHL experience, NHL Legacy Edition was basically NHL 15 or 14 from the previous generation with a roster update. The diehards kept their PS3s and Xbox 360s out for this instead. The game basically stayed the same until NHL 19, which most fans of the series would say was the first decent NHL game in a while. Featuring some fresh new game modes and improved gameplay, 19 wasn't a bad option if you had been skipping NHL games since 15. However, some reused assets and outdated presentation made the game feel a bit stale at times, almost like you've already played it before. NHL 20 had a similar feeling, only much stronger. The community gave this game a 3.7 out of 10 Metacritic user score and for good reason. It was basically a roster update, still running on EA's old engine, and it just gave off the impression that EA was done caring about its once beloved franchise. All the popular game modes were untouched, but Ultimate Team was as alive as ever, making EA as much money as ever. NHL 21 is probably the worst game in the series. Graphically, despite releasing in 2020, it looks awful. Look at a comparison between NHL 21 and NHL 15. How does 15 look that much better? Did they intentionally make the graphics look bad, so the following year when they went to next gen they could make the graphics look next gen? The game was a complete downgrade from NHL 20, which wasn't even that great of a game as it was basically a roster update of 19. Be a Pro got some upgrades, but the mode still felt lacking, especially compared to what we saw in the past, or compared to what other sports games like MLB The Show or NBA 2K were doing. Gameplay was glitchy and buggy, with a ton of exploits, and the community was starting to realize that user control didn't really matter that much. Ice Tilt, aka Dynamic Difficulty Adjustment, was released in an EA document, and despite EA denying its existence, it feels very real. Basically, when a worse team plays a better team, or a lower skilled opponent plays a higher skilled one, the game will cheat with its AI to force the game to be closer than it should be. When people started to figure this out, they wondered why they should even bother playing online. To top that off, defensive AI was clueless. The puck bounced around unrealistically, and the menus were outdated and slow. 
The game was simply tedious to play and received a 2.2 out of 10 user score on Metacritic. It was fair to say that the series had fallen off hard. Despite 19 showing some promise, it still wasn't anything special or even good, and the game was still missing features found in titles from the previous console generation and below. EA's once great franchise, one that helped popularize the NHL, one that former players credited for their fame, was now a soulless cash grab. NHL 22 just released and I've been playing it myself. EA must have noticed how unhappy their player base had become, or they were intentionally releasing bad games so that they had an easy bar to cross. Because this year's game is much better. While the game modes in depth are practically unchanged, on the next gen version of 22, gameplay is actually pretty good. This game is easily the best NHL title since 14, however that's again not a very high bar to cross. The game is plagued by bugs and glitches, but that could hopefully be fixed in future updates? Time will tell, but so far 22 does look to be a big step forward. Again, game depth is still shallow. However, compared to other EA Sports titles like The Last NBA Live and Madden, the last few NHL games actually look pretty deep in comparison. That's not a compliment, however, as those other two franchises are as shallow as can be, and older NHL games on worse hardware offered more. And the modes that are present in the game are as buggy as the gameplay, with stats and scores being tracked incorrectly, as well as dumb typos and an overall lack of polish. X-Factors are surprisingly fresh and fun, however, and if EA builds upon this game, we could have some great titles soon. The game is 100% a better start to a new console generation than NHL 15. For many, 22 will be the best they've played in a long time, and while that's a good thing, it's not a great game. Coming from a game as bad as NHL 21, it isn't that hard to show improvement and please casual fans. There is at least promise for the future, however, which you couldn't have said last year. The NHL series has a long and storied history. Longtime fans hope for a return to form, and it may be coming soon. For now, however, the NHL series has become another unpolished and shallow mess of an EA sports game, plagued by glitches and microtransactions. Hopefully the positives of NHL 22 are a sign of things to come, as the hockey community deserves a great game. Thanks for watching.